tone of voice needs to be confident. Uh, your your tone of voice needs to be confident. Your body language, the way you want to position your body language is the same as them. Remember, relationship means when you're related. Okay, not only in the stories that you tell, but also your body language. Okay. If this gentleman is sitting like this, I as an insurance agent have to sit like this, okay, for me to relate our mindsets together. And I'll teach you a way to understand if the client is in report with you. Um, if you want to check if the client is in report with you, after having a 30-minute warm-up and sitting exactly like him, switch feet. Switch your feet. Change your position on you when, you're stand when you're sitting down. And if they change their position with you, that means you're, you're, you're good to close. You're, clo you're closing. If they change their seat like you, okay, if you're sitting exactly like them for 30 minutes and you're having a conversation and you're relating to them constantly and constantly and constantly, after 30 minutes you change your seat position, if they change with you, that means they're buying from you. You can go to your presentation. You can go to start <coughs> closing. If they don't change their seat with you, that means they're not in report with you, and you don't. You still don't want to go to closing. You still want to change back to what they're sitting. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Got to try it. Have fun, number seven. Have fun and be funny. Guys, be funny. If you do, if you make the customer laugh, you will make the customer to buy. If you do not make the customer to laugh, you will not make the customer to buy. You want to overcome objections? You can overcome objections way before they give you objections just by making them laugh. How amazing is that? Get 10 loud laughs at them and you can close. You get 10 loud laughs from them, you're good to close. You don't get 10 loud laughs from them, you're still not closing. You will act like a salesperson when you go to your closing. Okay? But if you get laughs out of them, that's the biggest way to build a relationship with someone is for you to make them laugh. Okay? You ever um, some, saw somebody new and you went home and you said, wow, I really met this really, really cool person? Why do you say that? It's because they're funny. Okay? If they're not funny, they're mellow, they're whatever, you will never go home and say, I really met this really, really cool person. Would you? It's impossible. Never say that anyway. Well, <laughs> that's because you're not you're funny. Really, you're a really cool person, man. <laughs> so, in order to leave the client's house, okay, and your clients going to another of their mam family members and say, I really met this really, really cool insurance agent, you should buy from them, okay, the only way you can make them to do that is for you to make them laugh. If you do not make them laugh, they will not do that, and they will not buy from you. You want a 9 out of 10 closing ratio, you've got to make them laugh. How many of you guys make your clients laugh when you go to their houses? Two? Two? Okay. I'm sure I do. So now it becomes a norm. <laughs> Never get caught selling. <laughs> That's number eight. That Never get caught selling. If you, as an insurance agent, sell, they will not buy from you. If at the end of your presentation, if at the end of your closing, they say no to you, that's because you just sold. A salesman is only a salesman when he doesn't act like a salesman. Okay? You can only become a salesman when you don't act like a salesman. A salesman is not the person that says, oh, look at this. This is amazing. You should buy it right now. That's not a salesman. That's a cheap car salesman. That's a cheap used car salesman. You ever went to those dealerships and they said, good morning. You ever want to do those? Those are salesmen. You don't, you don't want to act like that. Okay? You want to act as, as giving them advice rather than for you to sell. You want to give them advices. You want to make them feel that you're giving them advice to buy a life insurance rather than for you to sell a life insurance. Okay? When you give them advice, they will buy from you. If you sell it to them, they won't, pro they won't buy from you. People like to buy, but they don't like to be sold. Okay? You can make them buy, but you can't sell it to them. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Can you say that again? About the, uh... People like to buy. They do not like to be sold.
Number nine. It's the relationship, not the price. Okay? You build enough relationship with your clients, they will not care about the price. I love it. I love it when I get to the closing, when I close the policy, when I get them to sign, and they say, so how, mu how, much, how much was the check for? How much do I need to write it for? I love it when it gets there. I love it when they don't remember the price. That tells me that I have done such a great job that they didn't even look at the price. Okay? And I love it. I love it when, I, when they're writing a check to me and they say, so who, uh, who do I make it help to? That tells me that I have built such a good relationship with them that I became their brand. I became the company. Not Banker's Life, not AARP, not New York Life Insurance, not blah, blah, blah. It was you who sold the policy, not the company. Okay? And a lot of times they say, oh, um, do, do, do I put a reminder on the bottom to Ali Navid? And I'm, no, no. If you do that, I can go shop with your checks. <laughs> so, my point is, if they say, how much do I make it out to? That means that you sold based on a relationship, not based on price. Okay? Guys, price does not sell anything. Okay? Every company out there, there is, if we can beat a price, then another company can beat our price as well. Okay? If I call a, I call a person and I say, I can beat your price, if you ever had those clients that you said, I can beat your price on a Medicare supplement and they hung up the phone on you, that's because they had had enough relationship with their insurance agents. Okay? But if you call and say, I can beat the price for you, and they say, okay, come over, that's because they don't have a good relationship with their insurance agents. And you're, you're the one who's about to build that good relationship with them. Number 10, review your quality and eliminate anything that isn't the best. You guys agree that there is a huge competition out there, right? I forgot how many... God, I wish I could have... I, I would have got the numbers for how many salesmen is in this nation. But the, the most jobs in this nation, it sells, it sells jobs. Okay? Which means you got a huge competition. It's not time for you to be 99%. It's time for you to be 100% for your clients. You become 99%. There's going to be one percent. There's going to be one person out there who's going to build that 100 percent closing ratio. It's who's going to build that 100 percent relationship with the clients, okay? And they're going to be the best. Be the best. When you, when you, I, I learned this in school. Um, when you shoot for a B, you will always end up with a C. But when you shoot for an A, you will always end up with an A. Why? Because you become a perfectionist. Uh, when I went to school. Um, when I got 90% in my classes, I would be mad. I would be upset. I would be like, man, I want to do 100%. That's because you become a perfectionist when you, do su when you become such a good person. Okay? So, what you need to do is for you to learn from your failures. Okay? When you fail in the house from building a relationship, when you fail in the house when someone else goes and buys a policy from someone else, okay? You learn from that failure. People learn. People don't learn from their su success. They learn from their failures. The most successful people in this world have failed every single day after they became successful. Okay. As a new agent, learn how different people sell. When I was in the car business, um, all the salespeople in my dealership didn't want to teach me how to sell because then I would have been a big competition for them. So what I did, I was a little bit of a smart aleck, and what I did was I started acting as a client, okay? I started acting as a customer, going to other dealerships, acting as if I want to buy a car, okay? And then I would see how the other salesman was selling a car to me, okay? And based on that, I would learn how salespeople sell cars. You see, you see how I learned how to sell cars? I couldn't learn it from other salespeople because they, couldn't, they wouldn't teach me in my dealership. So what I did was I acted as a customer, went to another dealership, and I acted as a customer, and they wanted to sell me a car. So that's how I learned. So, but in this business, thank God that that kind of competition is not around. In this business, everybody wants to help. 
You know, our environment, our office is such an amazing environment, such a great, it's such an amazing office. Where if, if you come to anybody and, and you would ask them for help, they would help you, okay? Learn how to sell. Don't be, don't be egotistic. This is not the business that you want to be egotistic and tell yourself that I'm the best at what I do. This is the kind of business that you want to know, that you want to learn from the best. So go to the best and ask them how they can teach you. Okay? If I was in a car business, I would have never stand up over here and teach you guys something like this. Because you would have been my biggest competition. But in the insurance business, it's a different world. I'm, open to, I'm very open to teach you things. So come to me. Come to Armin. Go to other managers. Ask them. Ask them how you can do better in this business. Ask them how you can sell better. Ask them how they, can sell, how they sell in the client's house. Okay? Number 12 is study your attitude. Don't just think you have a good one. Okay? A lot of us always think that we got the best attitude. We don't need to review it. Okay? You need to review your attitude every single time you go to the client's house. Okay? Every single time you're out of the client's house, you need to review your attitude and, and to make sure that you're doing good. Guys, read motivational books. Read sales books. Go to YouTube and watch some sales videos. That's going to work on your attitude. Start, start eliminating negativity out of your mindset. I want to tell you guys one thing. November was the worst month of my life. But I came to this place. I came to this office every single day with a positive attitude. Every single day I came to this place with a positive attitude. Okay? Positive attitude. When you look at the big picture, small things, that's not even going to hurt you when it's on your way. Okay? You need to build up a positive attitude. You need to start eliminating negative words out of your mind. You want to be a good salesperson? The first thing you need to do, the first rule of success is to be positive. You cannot afford one negative word in your mind. Okay? I was in the deepest time of my life on November. Okay? But every day I came to work with a positive attitude. Every day I, came, I went to out in the field. I didn't even, when I was in the client's house, I wasn't even thinking about the problems I had. I was managing my attitude. Okay? And when you manage your attitude, even if you're bottom, bottom of the barrel, you'll still make it. You will make it. Okay? Create a real difference between you and everybody else. Like I said, this is the time for you to be the best man out there. Okay? Because there is a huge competition between you and other people. You need to create a huge difference between you and other salespeople out there. You need to tell them that you're there because you want to be there to help them with their lives. You want to make sure that you're, that you're keeping in touch with them at every single point of their life. I always tell my clients, I say, listen, I want you to rely on me at every single point of your life. I want you to tell me what you need. If you want me to, if, if you want me to come to your house with a chocolate milk, if you want oranges for your kid, give me a call. Let me do that for you. Okay? It's time for you to differentiate from everybody else. Okay? What you need to do is not only to compare your sales skills with people, but also to contrast your sales skills with people. Understand what other people are doing wrong. Understand why people are not submitting so many applications. Understand why people don't have such a good closing ratio. And with that, you can differentiate yourself. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Sell it to help, not sell it to make money. You have to sell it you have to sell it so that they would understand that you're selling it because you want to help them. Not because you want, you're selling it because you want to make money. If they understand for one second, if they feel as if you're there for you to make money, they will not buy from you. Remember, the people that you're going to be dealing with are mostly over the age of 65 or mostly over the age of 50. They have been through a lot of sales. Okay? Even if they're not salespeople, they have been through a lot of salespeople. They can understand it when you are there to make money. Okay? You need to sell it based on helping. And the way you do that is by doing a personal story, which I'm going to go over very quickly. Sell the benefits, not the features. You want to sell the benefits of a policy. Okay? And it all goes, goes back to the three things 